We're recording now. Admit. Okay, so uh, this is going to be shorter lesson than yesterday. I thought I had just one hour to complete the whole thing, so I almost did it. Uh, but uh, it turned out we had two hours to complete this uh, this part of this uh, of this uh, of this course. So uh, again, the hand tools is the topic of this week. Uh, just as a reminder from the last uh, time. Okay, <clears throat> if you don't see me on a full screen, do we have a quiz next Thursday? Okay. The quiz is going to be online, so you're going to have a few days to do that. So it's not like you're going to have to come to class and do this. I am designing the quizzes online a little bit different than I would design the, the quizzes and tests um, uh, if you were coming to class. I'm asking the questions in a little bit different way. So uh, you actually have to do some research and uh, based on the uh, based on the lessons that we conduct here, there's nothing I'm going to ask you that uh, I haven't talked to you about. Okay? But uh, if it's an online quiz, then I'm going to make you look into some materials. Okay? It's just how you learn. Learning is the main objective. As long as you're learning while doing this, I'm happy. And was, as long as you learned, uh, as long as you learn what you have to learn after you leave my course, then I'm also happy. Okay? Uh, <coughs> uh, Okay, so yeah, this is next week. Uh, I'm going to launch the quiz based on everything that we have done up till today, including today's lesson. All right, so if you don't see me on the full screen, just mouse over me. See, I'm waving to you right now. Mouse over, you're going to see three dots. Click on those three dots. And you're going to have some options. Choose the pin video option to bring me on the full screen. People still joining in here. All right. Okay, so last, uh, this was our last slide uh, from yesterday. And this has something to do with the repetitive strain injuries. Uh, repetitive strain injuries are those type of injuries that do not occur, do not occur immediately they are uh, occurring after prolonged using a tool or repetitive action. Okay, so uh, just as a reminder here, these injuries can manifest as tingling, swelling in the joints, decreasing the ability to move, decreased grip strength, uh, continual muscle fatigue, uh, sore muscles, numbness, change in the skin color of your hands or fingertips, or pain from movement, pressure, or exposure to cold or vibration. These are not life-threatening injuries. However, uh, if anybody is experiencing any of those, uh, you can tell that uh, you could really, really do without them. Okay? That just make our lives harder. So the next slide we're going to, okay, so here we're going to go through some specifications. Why am I showing you this? Well, let's just have a um, scenario like this. Um, at some point, you might be hired as, um, as a supervisor or on the floor of some production plant. And let's say your boss is going to ask you to find a specific tool that you could distribute to everybody. So uh, if you were just purchasing a little screwdriver for yourself or some side uh, cutters or lineman pliers, just for yourself so you could use it every six months, once in a while, then uh, if it doesn't work properly or if it's not comfortable for you, you can just uh, lose maybe $40, $20, and you're not going to be happy about it, but you're not going to be extremely sad. However, if you are going to uh, have to purchase a number of tools uh, for 200 people on the production floor, then uh, you're going to have to do some research on how you should uh, properly um, purchase uh, certain type of tools. And there are some things to look at. Uh, one main thing is uh, the word that says ergonomics. Ergonomics. What is ergonomics? Ergonomics is the study of how the tool fits your body. 
how is the tool harmonizing with your body how comfortable the tool is and tool i mean it could be a screwdriver it could be a hammer it could be a hacksaw it could be a drill it could be a chair it could be a pen that you write with okay so um ergonomics have to do also uh, it's associated with the prolonged use of uh, something whatever you're using and <clears throat> the whole point of the whole game is is to not have a prolonged uh, type of an injury um, injury due to prolonged use of whatever you are using okay? is it either it's a, a procedure or uh, <clears throat> or, or, or use of some sort of a tool in a certain way can you please turn your cameras off sam i can see uh, there's a picture there is that your camera or is it just uh no it's not a camera sorry yeah it's just to save some bandwidth because we're having uh what do we have here we have 82 people in this uh class so uh if somebody has a camera turned on you're just uh taking the bandwidth and making the video more blurry uh, all right so I'll just take a look at some things when you're choosing um, when you're choosing uh, something like a power precision power and precision single grip power precision grip single handle sorry the telephone just <laughs> the telephone just has uh, distracted me okay we are where we are we can do what we can do all right so um, power and precision grips single handle let's say there's a screwdriver and the best thing is that uh, for the most comfortable use of that tool is that the handle diameter for the power tasks as opposed to precision tasks see there's a power task and there's a precision task so the handle of the screwdriver or any kind of a tool that you're handling with your hand would be um, uh, would be about uh, between one and a quarter and two inches in diameter okay then uh, when it uh, comes to precision tasks you don't want um, anything uh, you want something that is between a quarter and a half inch and I have some uh, I have some uh, um, I have some tools here we're going to do some measurements uh, in a second okay um now next thing power and precision grips for double handle okay so um, here is a single handle such as a screwdriver or a hammer and here is a double handle such as uh, side cutters or tweezers and so on okay so um <clears throat> open grip span for power task uh is no more so if you, if you open the tool, it should be no more than three inches while, while the handles are open. And here is the uh, little arrows uh, the pointing out the dimension limits here. Uh, and then for a closed grip, uh, should be no less than two inches. And for precision, um, uh, it says here, open grip span, precision task is no more than three inches and closed grip is no less than one inch as far as repetitive use of some uh, tools such as tweezers and so on however I'm just going to say it depends on depends on how you use this tool what you use this tool for I have um used some of the tweezers that when you have closed grip let's say something like this here are the tweezers switch the camera and of course if you look at the this this pair of tweezers the closed grip it is comfortable for the job that you're going to do and look it is way less than one inch and over here with some specifications it says no less than one inch but uh, honestly i just can't imagine this type of a tool that if i'm using like for example here's an old cell phone that's when i used to do cell phone repairs i can't i can't imagine any of that be 
uh, this uh, this grip of this tweez these tweezers to be anything uh, well one inch at least one inch I wouldn't be able to work with that okay so it also depends on um, how you're supposed to use this tool and for what task okay all right <clears throat> So these are just guidelines. So uh, obviously the tweezers that are, uh, oh, people are, obviously the tweezers that we're looking at here, they are slightly bigger than the ones for the miniature repairs. Uh, considerations when selecting a hand tool. All right, so for double-handed pinching, gripping or cutting tools, Select tool with handles that are spring loaded to return the handles to the open position. Well, there's one tool that you have, uh, you might have, and it would be these needle nose pliers that you use in the soldering lab. This is the spring loaded action here that it has. Let me focus that a little bit better. This is the spring-loaded action here that returns that to the open position, so you don't have to, uh, you do not have to uh, use your fingers or your your own power to open that. That gives you comfort. Okay? Another uh, another way of doing that, I have some pink pliers here or side cutters, which I bought at Walmart, a sewing kit. And I just found that these are really nice for cutting the um, electronic parts after soldering. Uh, it was cheap. There was uh, one of those, one of these, and there was some other uh, crimping tool and some little whatever other accessories. And all it was all for $7. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. Yes, you can see that this thing is getting rusty a little bit. But at this point, I don't care. Uh, so here is the spring-loaded action that uh, is returning right here. See, it's returning those side colors, those miniature side colors to the open position. Another way, you probably have those in your kit. This is the stripper, uh, a little bit more complicated mechanism here. Um, again, when you uh, when you when you do the cut, uh, the tool returns to the open position by itself. Right? So that is uh, that's a really good uh, idea to have something like that. Okay, so who is waiting? Admit. All right. Uh, so uh, this was about uh, this here. Select tools uh, for double for double hand uh, double handle pinching, gripping, or cutting tools. Select a tool with handles that are spring loaded to return the handles to the open position. Next thing: select a tool um, without sharp edges or finger grooves on the handle. Well, can we see anything here? This tool has nice, nicely smooth um, handle here. So when you are pinching and gripping that, over prolonged use, nothing is going to bite into your skin. Um, these here, as opposed to those, I can see that there's a little bit, uh, this edge here is sort of, it has a bit of a curvature. But if I had to use this tool a thousand times a day, every day for eight hours, I would probably develop some sort of uh, maybe blister or something on my hand. Okay, I'm not sure. There's, it's, it's borderline. It's smooth enough still, but I wish this would be a little bit smoother. Okay, um, is there other, yeah, okay, so these guys here, now this is quite smooth, right? You can use this all day long and have a smile on your face, uh, except for this is getting a little bit rusty. So remember I told you about slightly oiling your tools? Eh, I would not be oiling this thing too much, maybe just a little bit of a, 
coating here so it doesn't rust on me. But this is, uh, you know, uh, probably like a $2 tool. I spent $2 on this. Uh, so I would not be crying if this, if this, I had to throw this out. But for the time being, these needle nose pliers work okay for the little tasks that I'm doing once in a while. Now, as opposed to having a tool like this, these are my side cutters. And notice I have labeled them on the inside of the grip. Okay. Always label your tools. Now, I'm not using, any, excuse me, any oil or any kind of thing that, I, well, basically I don't have to. This is a pretty good tool. The residue, I was cutting the plastic packaging. I have to remove that from it. Um, now, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you about the pricing of the tools. The side cutters that you have are okay. They're probably worth maybe $20 each or so. If you are, because if you're going to use a tool for the long time, day in and day out, for long hours, like for example, when I was doing my, uh, data installations and wiring installations. This was my most used tool on the site. I would have to cut wires and cut more wires and cut more wires and cut more, I get the idea. Uh, day in and day out, eight, sometimes 10, sometimes 12 hours a day it would be long days. And this would be the most used tool. Um, I spent $50 on these, which is not, you know, it, it, the price might look a little bit steep. Uh, I'm going to spend $50 or $60 maybe now um, at local, um, local hardware supply stores. And, um, well, the price might seem a little steep, however, this tool I have used and abused over the years. It would fall down so many times from the ladder. I would be basically having this thing in my pocket all the time. That would be the tools that I use the most. I bought this thing about 15 years ago. And this thing is still as good as new. Looks like it's a little bit worn, but it's still safe. It's still good. It is still good to the feel. It doesn't have the spring loaded action because this is not a precision tool. Uh, so this is the way you handle that. You just hold it in your hand and just put your little pinky here just to make, just so you can open that. So it becomes your second nature. But $50 I spent 15 years ago. Uh, $15 divide by 15 you can see how much it costs you per year. So this thing has paid for itself in multiple ways. And because it is really well ergonomically designed tool, I didn't develop uh, some blisters on my hand while I was using this. Okay? So when it comes to purchasing tools, you want to, uh, sometimes uh, you know, there's that expression that says you get what you pay for. Um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much, uh, that would be, uh, that, that would check, um, that would be checking out in this sort of, uh, situation here. All right. Um, what else do we have? Um, select a tool that is coated with soft material adding, um, select a tool that is coated with soft material, adding a sleeve to the tool handle pads, the surface, you can add that, but that increases the diameter of the grip. So the best thing is that once you buy the tool, uh, is that it is done originally the way it's supposed to be done, as opposed to um, buying a tool that you're going to find, that you're going to have to add some tape or something like that, that you actually, by doing that, you are changing the specification, the physical, aspect of the tool. Okay. Um, 
And this is the end of the PowerPoint. Now, what do I have here? I have a few tools. Let's just go back. I'm just going to go back on some of the diameter, some of the dimensions. And we're going to check out uh, what kind of tools we have here. Let's take a look at the single handed um, or single uh, one handle uh, tool, excuse me, such as a screwdriver. Right. So over here, we have a red Robertson and we have a green Robertson. Red Robertson and green Robertson. Robertson is number one. Robertson number one is green. Robertson number two is red. And Robertson is basically a square type of uh, screwdriver head as opposed to Phillips, which would look like, which would look like this. Some people call it a star. So this would be Phillips number two. And slightly smaller Phillips number one. Okay. Where is that Phillips? No, no that's not a Phillips. Here's Phillips number one. Okay. Phillips number one, Phillips number two. You see, Phillips number two has slightly bigger head, and Phillips number one has slightly smaller head for turning the Phillips screws. Let's take us, let's take some measurements. What do they call for, for the best optimal ergonomic situation? Um, okay, single hand, um, single handle tool. Let me see if I can hold it the same way this guy is holding it. All right. Yeah, you're holding it that way. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's look, uh, let's, let's look at uh, some of the measurements. Diameter. Uh, is one and a quarter up to two inches for the best, for the most comfortable operation here. One and a quarter, two inches. Let's see if we have that. What does the handle say here? All right. This would be one and a half. This would be one and a quarter. This would be two inches. Where do we hit? Where do we have? Where do we stop on this one here? Right here. A little bit more than one and a quarter. So this would fit within the comfortable grip while while using and not getting injured. Now, let's say another one. There's a Phillips number two out of the package that I got. This one here fits within, let's see here. Uh, yeah. Well, each and one eighth. So you would probably try to look for something bigger than that if you want to have prolonged operation. Let's just look at this thing here that way. Yeah, inch and one eight. This will be inch and one quarter. So also depends what kind of hands you are. Some people have bigger hands, some people have smaller hands. Let's take another one. Uh, look, this is a slotted screwdriver. One quarter times four, so quarter inch, quarter inch here of the head, times four inches. Let's see the handle diameter on this one. Right here. An inch and 16. Is this because somebody's trying to save on materials. That's almost a quarter. 
Well, well, I'll tell you, it does look comfortable when I'm handling this. Right. Also, it depends on what kind of hands you have. Right. If you will have bigger hands, you would probably choose to have a little bit slightly larger diameter of the handle. So that's what's on the market. Uh, this is another screwdriver that I purchased uh, in Canadian Tire the other day. What does this one show here? Ah, this is within inch and a quarter. And I would say this does feel good. But so is this one. Slightly smaller, but still okay. Um, if you're using this type of screwdriver for a longer period of time, then you'll probably uh, see if there, you know, you develop certain kind of a pains in part of your hand or not. Uh, and then maybe you would choose to um, uh, to get another tool. Now for single-handed for precision tasks, uh, between quarter and a half an inch. Let's see if we have some precision task screwdrivers here. Yes, we do. Right. These would be the smaller screwdrivers. Now you spend a little bit more money. This would be the cheapest thing that you could get. This kind of a screwdriver. Uh, and that is a torque. Is it a torque? Yeah, it's a torque screwdriver for turning. It's a miniature torque screwdriver. I'll show you on the microscope. That's what a torque screwdriver looks like. It's a miniature torque screwdriver for turning screws on cell phones. Okay. There's another torque screwdriver I have. Is that a torque? Yes. Uh, microscope. Focus. That's a Phillips. Well, that's for turning miniature screws in. Um, yeah, that's a torque one here. There you go. That's for turning screws in. Um, let me just find a screw here that I could. Like that one here. Can this thing be seen? Here's a screw. Yeah, it's a miniature torque screw on the cell phone. Now uh, let me see, there's another one here. It's gonna be seen better. There you go. And this screwdriver would be able to handle this type of, uh, we need a slightly bigger one, okay, for that one. Or because that screw is warped. Is there another one? Yeah, this one is smaller. The screwdriver is too small for this type of screw. Okay, so, and where are we? All right, what is this, what are the specs calling for? Uh, precision task, uh, one quarter to half inch. Okay, let's see the cheapest one that we have. The cheapest one would be one quarter up to half inch, right? Yeah. So no less than a quarter inch, no more than half inch. What does this one show? Quarter inch. Okay, so this would be okay to use in, on repetitive, um, according to this sheet that we have here. However, this one I would use once in a while because this is the most simple thing. There's, there's no moving parts here or whatsoever. I have another screwdriver here that uh, if you want to pay the money, you want, might want to pay the money if you're doing something like cell phone repairs or miniature tasks. You might want to have, this is slightly softer. It's a soft and uh, a little bit bigger diameter handle, uh, about half inch, which is great. And also what it has, it has a moving uh, butt stock here that you could place it against your hand and you can keep turning. 
so it's more comfortable. Or even if you do many of those, it's a, it's a bit of an oval shape. Yeah. You can actually see it's it's not a straight circle. You can actually put your finger here and do your operations like that. I'm just showing you these things because if you are doing something once in a while, that's fine. But if this is the tool that you're going to use a thousand times a day, trust me, those little things do make a difference. And you want to may, you might want to spend a couple of dollars more uh, on some more expensive tools, and your body is going to thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> What else do we have? Okay, let's see for the uh, power and precision tasks for the handles. The one that I have, that I spent $50 on, uh, it's calling for the opening not more than three inches and closed grip uh, no less than two inches. Let's see here. Once I open it, I'm just going to open it in a comfortable position like that. And I'm going to leave it like that. And you know what? It's about three inches. See? All right, so that's correct. Closed grip. About two inches. So you have a one inch of a play. And it actually falls within the ergonomics that would be specified for this, uh, for this type of tool. And trust me, it is very comfortable. You can download the, well, uh, I posted this lecture notes yesterday you can download that and you're going to see uh, these specifications and you can get um, uh, your tools that you have out of your kit and you can put it against uh, some of those specs and then put it against your own body to see if to see if these uh, tools are comfortable for you to use okay um, all right you know what that's pretty much it for today. Um, these, lecture po these lecture notes are already uh, posted yesterday. If you have any questions, by all means, please uh, send me an email. I'll try to uh, answer those uh, emails as fast as I can. Sometimes it takes longer. And if I forget, I, oh, sorry, if one of them slips through the cracks, please forgive me and send me again. I'm not ignoring you. Sometimes I just get a little emails. All right. Um, any questions? Uh, those. Uh, okay. Let's see. Let me take a look at the chat here. Side cutters used for cutting plastics. Side cutters used for cutting plastics? Question mark. Sometimes you can cut plastic with uh, side cutters. The best example would be cutting zip ties. Zip ties are made out of plastic, and the side cutters are great. For cutting, uh, for cutting those zip ties. Um, <clears throat> wire, yes, wire, most definitely. Would uh, hockey tape on the handles be okay? <clears throat> Just as I said, you know, once you do the hockey tape, hockey tape is meant uh, for the hockey stick. And just, just think about it. I'm not a hockey player. However. I've seen, uh, I, I know somebody uh, who plays hockey and he told me a thing or two. We never talked about the hockey sticks and the grip, but just think about it. When you have the hockey tape that you are using for your hockey stick, when you play hockey, you don't play hockey with the bare hands, you play hockey with the gloves. So now if you're using bare hand, you're going, if you wrap around things with the hockey tape, you are changing the parameters of the tool that that was that was originally made. Okay, so it might work for you, but my guess is that it probably will not. You might end up uh, either getting frustrated and buying another tool, or if you're stubborn and keep using it, uh, you might develop some injuries. Or you know what? Sometimes people on the construction sites, a lot of people, they use gloves. Uh, because you're touching a lot of things that are dirty, dusty, abrasive, and you know, if you work over the years with your bare hands, your skin becomes a little bit rough. Uh, so some people do like to use gloves while working on construction sites. So it's basically what uh, 
what works for you. However, if uh, you are, as I said, supervisor in, on the, uh, in the factory on the, on the floor, and if you have to order tools for a uh, larger amount of people, and you have to order 200 of those or 500 of those, you might want to spend a little bit more research and just maybe get this thing because the thing might look uh, nice on the picture. Uh, but uh, once you get this thing in your hand, you go, oh, wow, that's not what they showed on the picture, you know. Um, I feel that is one of the best, if, okay, so what the, okay, yeah, hockey tape, yeah, so that was the thing. So I just, I think I answered that question. I hope I did. Uh, those cheap ones are the worst for repairs. Um, the, uh, I'm assuming you're talking about cheap tools. Yes, the cheap tools. Cheap tools are okay if you want to do a little bit of a toy repair for your kid or for your neighbor's kid or for your nephew or niece. Um, you just do it once and if it's uncomf not comfortable, you just deal with that. But if you are using something for work, then cheap tools, uh, you're going to pay it. You're going to end up paying more. Like, let's say this costs fifty dollars, and I'm going to spend. Uh, say, oh, somewhere else, I can I can buy similar ones for twenty dollars. Well, there's a reason why those are twenty dollars because maybe nobody wants to buy them, or they have a lot of returns and they just want to get rid of the stock. Uh, and then you're using them for a little bit, and you go, you know what? <sighs> My hand hurts. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to end up buying those uh, $50 ones anyway. So all of a sudden, this $50 tool costs you $70 <laughs> because 20 plus 50. Um, yeah, there is no more chat lines happening here. Um, <clears throat> We're going to finish like this. Uh, the next week, I'm going to launch a quiz, which is going to cover all the materials that we talked uh, and all the materials that are posted online. And it is going to be open book test. However, I'm going to, to design this quiz that uh, if it's an open book, I'm going to make you look in that open book. I'm going to make you open that book which means uh, not necessarily a book, but maybe these lecture notes that I am posting here. And you might have to maybe review some minutes of the videos uh, that uh, I posted on YouTube, because all the lectures that I'm doing, I'm posting on, on YouTube, including them in a playlist. Uh, so uh, you either make notes, you should make notes, you should remember some stuff that I'm saying, and if you don't, uh, and if I feel it's important for you to know, I'm going to make you look in those. So yeah, it is online, but it's, I'm going to make you look, right? And try, you know, uh, to be honest with yourself, seriously, because if you cheat, uh, it is going to catch up with you sooner or later, one way or another, okay? You might slip through the cracks, I might not catch you cheating. However, one day you're going to leave the school, you're going to walk out through that door, and you're not going to be with your friends on the construction site or on the production floor or wherever your work is going to be. You're not going to be able to cheat and you are going to be spotted right away. So that way you might not keep your job or might, they might give you other tasks that are not as enjoyable as, uh, as they would be if you were not cheating and being honest with yourself. You're doing it for yourself. All right, Van by the River motivational speech, okay? Okay, guys, uh, uh, I will see you when I see you. Will there be two attempts? Yes, there will be two attempts. Usually I give people two attempts because just in case somebody has an internet uh, connection problems or so on. So I'm just going to say, you know, if you, if you have a bad internet connection and one attempt work, doesn't work, it kicks you out right away, do not try the same moment, the same connection. Try to make you have you know different connection. Try to find out what the problem was, because then you're going to use your two attempts, and then you're going to be uh, you know out of luck on this one. All right. Uh, have a good afternoon. How are you guys have a good afternoon and have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And I will talk to you when I talk to you, and I will see you when I see you.